Hello YouTube and welcome to another Zen and Art of Miniature Painting video. And in today's video, uh, just a quick rundown of uh, and, and review of the Polish Infantry Squad in Great Coats from Warlord uh, Games. So for £15 you get uh, a box of 10 figures and uh, these cover the early war period. So the, the Polish army um, still fighting at home in September 1939 before they were basically expelled out of their own country and then had to go and fight abroad for France and for Britain. Um, as you can see, the box is pretty standard. Uh, it's got the sort of Osprey style art on the front. And uh, th these really fill a niche in the market because in terms of 28mm availability for uh, Polish army, it's very, very limited. Um, it's either Warlord or I think Gorgon Studios do some. And then uh, Black Tree Designs used to have a range of Polish, but they seem to have disappeared off the face of the earth. I do actually have some of those miniatures, uh, and they are quite good. So this is just a this is just a quick rundown of what's in this box here. So pretty pretty typical, really, um, in terms of the the sort of uh, design standards uh, that we come to expect at Warlord Games. These are done by a different sculptor than the original bolt action miniatures, which I also have. So in a previous video, I looked at an infantry squad. It was a it's, it's a different sculptor, so these are going to be slightly different. These have been done by the new guy, Washtek, I think is his name, and it uses the figurehead system. So um, they're not poseable at all, but you can swap the heads around. Looking at the edge of the box there, you can see it's got a little Polish flag on the side in case you you forgot what it looked like. <laughs> okay, and then of course, as usual, on the back of the box you've got um, you know photos, and as you'll notice, actually you don't get any doubles in this box. So every single fi figure is an uh, uh, is a unique pose. And what I like about this is the fact that there's variety. So you've got the kneeling figures, one loading, one firing. You've got a fellow charging with his rifle with a bayonet fixed. The BAR gunner standing, a, a chap preparing a grenade for throwing, um, and an NCO um, holding a pair of binoculars. <clears throat> and then obviously a man running on the left. That's quite a good pose as well. Again, they just look. There's a good variety there, some more dynamic than others, but it's quite nice that there's that variety built into the set. Okay, um, obviously there's a painting guide on the back of the box, uh, but just from a, just from looking at these pictures, you should be able to tell that they're a different uh, style of sculpting to the original set that, um, that Warlord uh, bought from Bolt Action Miniatures. So there we go. It's a 10-man squad, which doesn't really fit into any uh, force organization for the Poles. You get a BAR gunner. You get potentially a grenade thrower and you get a uh, sort of NCO to be in charge of the, of, of the squad. And it's all £15 British. <coughs> okay, here are the painted figures. So what I did was um, use my standard painting method, except this time around I went for a kind of a wash and then a slight highlight on them for miniatures. Uh, the skin, I didn't do my usual three layer highlight because... Uh, this is one of my criticisms of these fig figures, is that the, the, the sculpting style is, is much shallower than uh, the bolt action style that I'm used to uh, painting. And uh, honestly, I was a bit disappointed. These are very slight figures, and I'll show you a comparison later on that'll kind of make that clear. So as you can see here, um, I've gone for my standard basing scheme that I use for my Polish troops, 1939 campaign, and I added the little Blue, uh, blue collar tabs or blue collar stripes on the great coats just to kind of give them a bit of color. And these were standard for infantry formations, um, and I just wanted that little bit of um, break up in the kind of relative monotony of the browns. Uh, there's a fellow with his um, uh, binoculars, and as you can see, the you know the the face. I, I don't know that you know the eyes. I, I tried. I desperately tried to kind of make it work, but it was just uh, it just it just it just wasn't working for me. That those the faces are a bit odd. Some were better than others, and that was a particularly uh, difficult face to paint. Um, I went for a relatively simplistic paint style, as you can see. But nevertheless, you know, I think they come up well when you zoom in like this. Actually, they don't look that great. This face is fantastic. The the sort of the animation in there. Um, uh, I, I was, <clears throat> as I say, I. I you know, when you look at them at a distance, I think they look far better than when you zoom in. Part of it is obviously the paint job. I haven't put the usual amount of care and attention to detail that I put into a paint job with these figures. And in all honesty, one of the reasons is because I'm just, although I like the poses, I just wasn't that into them as as, as figures go. Um, I, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought some figures were definitely good. Others were, were, were very weak in terms of uh, the quality of the sculpt. And the faces in particular, as a focal point for a miniature, I found them particularly um, underwhelming. Um, I was glad, however, by the fact that you know you get variety in heads. If you want it, you can choose which head goes with which body. And I also like the, the the sort of the fact that you've got a guy with binocs, you've got a guy priming a grenade, and you've also got the BAR gunner. And these these crouching figures are fantastic. But um, you know this is not this is not a set without criticism. I think the fact that 
uh, they've been done by a different sculptor kind of means that they will naturally kind of um, have a different style and this is a style that's not necessarily my my, uh, my my personal preference. Here's a little bit of a comparison now. So on the left hand side you can see um, on the far left you've got an, uh, one of the original bolt action miniatures and you can notice just from the kind of bulk of the figure that he's a lot uh, chunkier than uh, the, the newer sculpts and, and actually I quite like the, the slightly chunkier look I must admit. I think with 28 millimeter, um, you know, that's one of the kind of things you get is a slightly chunkier figure. One of my big disappointments with these figures is that if you look at the bottom of the feet, uh, they don't actually have putties. Um, they're the kind of wraps that go around at the base of their boot. And what I suspect has happened here is that these bodies seem to me anyway, and I can't confirm this until I get the other box set, but they seem to be the 10th motorized company figures and then just with different heads because the, the 10th motorized company had Stahlhelms and I think with a different NCO. So I, I am slightly concerned because um, it basically they haven't bothered swapping the feet out on these guys. Now it's not a huge thing because you don't generally see the feet, especially under a great coat, but nevertheless it's a concern. Of course the guys in great coats are also not wearing full equipment, which the guys in normal uniforms are, in summer uniforms are. Uh, and again, um, you know, if that's something you want then unfortunately you've got to look somewhere else. But um, okay figures, I'd probably give them a 5 out of 10, maybe a 6 out of 10. Um, but they're done. Quick, quick paint job and ready to go. Thank you very much for watching.